Grab your popcorn as we recap Netflix's new true crime movie about Charlie Cullen, a nurse who purposefully kills his patients. It's 1996 in Pennsylvania. A patient is experiencing an unexpected code blue, and Charlie goes in to help the seizing patient. Doctors come in and Charlie steps aside to watch the patient die. Charlie looks empty and shows a look of concern, but deep inside he feels satisfaction. The main story takes place in 2003 at Pockfield Memorial Hospital in New Jersey. Amy takes really good care of her patient, Ana Martinez. While trying to turn one of her patients over, Amy feels a lot of pain in her chest. She has difficulty breathing, but is able to keep it together. After her shift, she goes home and pays the babysitter. Amy is a single mother of two daughters, Alex and Maya. Then she goes to see a doctor about her condition. The doctor says she could die in a few months if Amy doesn't get a heart transplant. He recommends she stops working immediately. Amy is unable to do so because she doesn't get medical insurance and paid leave until after a year of working at the hospital. Amy goes to pay her bill of $980, but she can only afford half of it for now. At the hospital, Amy meets the new guy Charlie for the first time, so she gives him a tour. She teaches him how to obtain meads on the automated dispensing machine. Charlie mentions he used to work with a woman named Lori at Chorland's hospital. Amy is surprised they have a mutual friend. They tend to their first patient, Ana Martinez. Both Amy and Charlie have amazing bedside manners and treat their patients really well. Later on, Amy offers to share her dinner with Charlie since he forgot to bring dinner. Charlie says he has two daughters as well but he doesn't live with them since his baby mama moved away. A patient calls for Amy's help, but Charlie volunteers to do the work for her. Amy is really happy about her new co-worker. Back at home, Alex is pissed that her shoes are crap and that she never gets anything new. But most importantly, she's mad that she barely sees her mom nowadays with Amy working a lot. On her next shift, Amy is having a really difficult time managing her heart and breathing. She goes to a private area and tries to regulate her breathing as she gasps for air. Cholly notices this and helps her out. She admits that she has cardiomyopathy, a condition that makes it harder for the heart muscles to pump blood to the rest of her body. She wants Cholly to keep everything a secret so she doesn't get fired. Cholly says he is willing to help Amy during the next four months before her health insurance kicks in. Cholly then gives his sweater to Amy. Time passes and they are even carpooling with each other. At work, they find out Ana Martinez died unexpectedly. They go to prepare her body. Cholly shares how his own mom died at a hospital and how her body was lost for a couple hours. Then her body was found, and it was treated with very little respect. Cholly says this part is important for him because it gives the dead some dignity back. Amy goes out to talk to Ana's husband who is completely distraught about the situation. Meanwhile, Cholly stares deep into Anna's dead eyes. Seven weeks pass, and detectives have been called to get involved in Anna's mysterious death. They work with Linda Garren, the hospital's risk manager who seems more worried about the hospital's reputation than the patient. She was forced to invite Detective Stim and Danny as a formality. They find out that Anna's body has been cremated, and the family is not aware of the possible misconduct. Later, Cholly is at Amy's house helping Alex memorize her lines for a play. He's grown really close to Amy's kids, and they've grown an attachment to him as well. Tim and Danny find out that Cholly had a trespass charge back in Pennsylvania. Supposedly Cholly slashed a co-worker's tires after they broke up, but all charges were dropped. There was also a post-it note that said Dijoxin on his file. Danny knows there is something afoot. Linda makes an announcement to the hospital staff that the police will be asking the staff some questions, but either the lawyer or Linda must be present, otherwise they are breaching their contracts and could get fired. Patient confidentiality must also be their utmost priority. Danny and Tim are pissed that Linda has to be present during the staff interviews, because they don't think the nurses will tell the whole truth if their boss is around. Amy is the first one to be interviewed about Ana Martinez. Meanwhile, Linda is called out of the room, giving the detectives full control of the interview. Danny gives Amy a chart. Amy sees that Anna's glucose level was really high. She says that someone gave Anna insulin by mistake, especially since Anna isn't diabetic. When Linda comes back, Amy gets asked about Cholly. However, 
Amy defends Charlie and says it can't be him since Anna died on day shift and they work nights together. While working, Amy experiences really bad symptoms due to her disease. Charlie steals some medication from the med station. He admits that by cancelling the request on the computer, it will still open. It's a glitch he's able to work around to grab meads. Danny and Tim try to dig up some stuff from Charlie's past work history, but all the hospitals he's worked at refuses to give them anything. Eventually, they receive paperwork from Amy's hospital. They were expecting boxes of records, but only receive a few pages. Danny talks to Linda about the missing pages on the med station reports. Linda lies and says it only stores information for the last four weeks. Danny notes there are missing pages and Linda is withholding evidence. Linda tries to leave but Danny has had enough and yells at her. Later, Amy tends to her patient Kelly Anderson and Kelly's husband Tom Anderson. They both just had a baby together. On their break, Charlie vents to Amy about his ex who is preventing Charlie from seeing his daughters. And supposedly his ex made up a story about Charlie poisoning their family dog. Later, Danny finds out that insulin and digoxin were found in Anna's system. Their supervisor bans both detectives from the hospital because of how Danny treated Linda earlier. During Amy's night shift, she finds that Kelly is slowly losing it. After looking at Kelly's labs, she finds out there's insulin in her system. Kelly ends up dying unexpectedly and Amy gives Tom the bad news. Charlie looks at Amy from afar, and Amy has an uneasy look on her face. One day, the detectives pay Amy a visit at her home. She mentions Kelly Anderson, assuming that's what they wanted to talk about. However, it's the first time the detectives are hearing about this second case. She defends Charlie again. She says that if Charlie actually did something, then he wouldn't have been able to get another job. However, all the hospitals seem to have been covering something up. The detectives ask Amy for help. Amy starts to feel uneasy around Charlie, so she invites Lori for breakfast. They catch up. Amy asks Lori about their mutual co-worker Charlie Cullen. Lori tells Amy about the rumors surrounding Charlie ODing someone. Insulin was found in saline bags. After Charlie left Lori's hospital, they didn't have as many patients dying abruptly. Amy immediately goes to the hospital to check the saline bags. She finds a few that squirt saline out, indicating someone injected it with insulin. After this revelation, Amy collapses and is hospitalized. She wakes up to Charlie tending to her, and she's immediately terrified knowing full well that he could have tampered with her saline bag. She tries to leave the hospital, but Charlie keeps reassuring her to stay. Once discharged, Amy tells Charlie that she doesn't want him to go in her house because she just needs to sleep. Charlie reminds her that she only has a month left before insurance kicks in. Eventually, she tells the detectives about her findings. Amy is willing to work with the detectives but in secret so she doesn't get fired. Amy notes that Charlie has been using insulin on patients, and it goes into the bloodstream slowly so no one would suspect him on his shift. She also notes any clear liquid like digoxin could be put in the saline bag as well. Amy is surprised Linda only gave Danny a few pages of the med station records. She says it keeps all records because it's a computer. It doesn't erase anything. She agrees to get Charlie's report to show he pulled insulin and digoxin when he wasn't supposed to. Then, Amy gets Tom Anderson to dig up Kelly in order to do a full autopsy on her body. At work, Amy removes any saline bags that Charlie replaces. And she puts a new saline bag. She also gets a full report from the med station. They get time stamps from when Charlie logged in and grabbed insulin and match it up with Kelly's time of death in labs. Unfortunately, the report says Charlie cancelled the medication requests. Charlie used the glitch in his favor. Unfortunately, since they were cancelled, they can't use this to charge him. Eventually, Linda fires Charlie for putting the incorrect dates on his resume. But really she's firing him because she knows Charlie is behind something far nefarious. Danny is pissed that Charlie was fired and the hospital can continue covering things up. He states Charlie can just get another hospital job and continue with his misdeeds. Amy gets home and is surprised and disgusted that Charlie is babysitting his daughters. He yells at his daughters to get away from Charlie and go to their room. Then, Amy tries her best to politely ask Charlie to leave because she needs alone time with her daughters. Once he's gone, Amy gasps and sobs. Later, 
the detectives wire up Amy so that Charlie can confess to his crimes. At a diner, the two meet up. Apparently, Charlie is going to be working at a new hospital in Pennsylvania tonight. Amy brings up all the rumors surrounding Charlie. Charlie says he doesn't want to talk about it. Amy tries to bring it up again anyway and reaches for Charlie's hands, but he flinches her away. He excuses himself to leave for work. The cops end up taking him in, but they are only able to hold him for 48 hours. They hope to get a confession during this time frame. The two detectives start their questioning process. They ask about the IV bags that he injected in the hospital. They bring up Ana Martinez and Kelly Anderson. Cholly says he can't talk about any of this. They continue asking him questions while Cholly begins to cry and whispers, I can't. He begins to say I can't repeatedly until the detective slams the table. Cholly then begins to slam the table and says I can't, I can't. Reela loudly and screaming at Tim's face. Soon, 36 hours have passed and they seek Amy's help for the questioning. She's brought to Cholly to begin the interview, but she asks if they can take his handcuffs off. Cholly tells her to go away but instead, Amy gives Cholly her sweater, just like he did before. Amy tells Cholly how grateful she is for everything Cholly has done for her. She apologizes for lying to him and going behind his back. Cholly begins to open up. He said he just did it with no other explanation. Amy asks him to elaborate. Cholly brings up all the patient's names he killed while Amy's eyes begin to tear up. To avoid the death sentence, Cholly pled guilty to killing 29 people, but the real number could be as many as 400. He never explained why he did it. Cholly is currently in New Jersey State Prison serving 18 consecutive life sentences. Cholly had been a nurse for 16 years and no hospital has ever stopped him. There are no criminal proceedings against any of these hospitals. By the end of the movie, the faucet in Amy's home drips like an ivy bag. Alex wakes her up saying it's a school day. But Amy says they are staying home today. Amy got her heart surgery and is currently living with her daughters and granddaughters. She's still a good nurse. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.